Hey there, how are you today? My name is Dana Damara and you have landed on Astrocast. This is your full moon in Aquarius report for the full moon happening August 19th at 1125 AM Pacific Standard Time. Now, first of all, I'm not trying to hide whoop, this way, all of those things behind me with my plant it just happened that way. You probably didn't even notice, but what is behind me is completely indicative of this full moon. <laughs> this full moon is all about changes. And I have been talking about this, well, weekly, weekly leading up to it and everything that has been happening this week prior to the full moon is setting us up for these big big changes now if you didn't watch last week's forecast uh last week's forecast i talked about the theme being big energy and it is very big energy let's remember we are in still in the middle of mercury and retrograde okay so everything is is up for renewal revisiting refinement realignment right so i need to show you the chart but you know what's behind me is my daughter's moving out and she is going to college. And we have been packing literally all week amidst car issues, which is like, really this week of all weeks? <laughs> okay. So I think one of the things that I wanna say in this very beginning, the very beginning of the report, so you don't have to wait to the end, is as we move toward this big full moon energy, um, one of the best things you can do is a couple of things. One is actually trust that every single thing that is happening, that's shifting, that's leaving, that's showing up, most likely leaving or shifting or like shifting your plans or redirecting or rerouting you is so freaking purposeful. And trust me, I know that it's hard to believe it, but you have to believe it. So uh, trust that the things that are happening are perfect. And the second thing is if you don't have like a breath or a meditation or some sort of practice that brings you into the awareness of what is true, I would say institute that practice like today. So when you can truly trust that things are aligned, or even if you don't right away, because by the way, most of us don't, especially if things don't go exactly the way we want them to, um, your second line of uh, defense, for lack of a better word, is to trust the process. So that's all I'm going to say. And now I'm going to show you the screen. <laughs> Okay, so a couple things I want to say here. There's a lot going on, so I'm going to try to um, I'm going to try to sum it up. I'm going to try not to be like uh, long-winded. Okay, so um, the reason why this is a full moon in Aquarius is because the moon's down here at 27 degrees, by the way, and uh, Aquarius, and the sun is at 27 degrees, Leo. Okay, just 27, and then here's the here's the culprit here's the culprit uranus okay so uranus is uh at the top of this t-square so uranus is making a square to the sun and the moon that's the first thing uranus is the planet of of unexpected changes unexpected events um shifting liberation making changes normally big changes not small changes um uh, the higher mind, right? So these higher mind in, inspiring thoughts might be coming through um, something that you need to liberate your from liberate yourself from, which is, it could be anything, right? Like a, a relationship or a thought pattern or whatever. That's the energy that is squaring the full moon and squares um, ask us, they're intense. They ask us to make a move they create tension so that we're forced to make a move we're forced to do something different we're forced to like make a change so um just fyi now the other thing here is mercury is sitting right next to the sun which means it's directly opposite the moon so this has to do with um 
communication, with travel plans, with plans in general, with the way we process information, right? So it's opposite the moon, sitting with the sun, squaring Uranus. Like, I'm sorry, but actually, sorry, not sorry, okay? Um, but this is like, <laughs> it's like big freaking energy. This is asking you to activate whatever it is that you have been wanting to activate. It's asking you to, um, if you're working on a project, right? If you've been working on a project for a while, it's asking you to like continue to work on it, but to expect changes, to expect red lines, to expect some kind of new information that's coming through. So it's, it's for lack of a better word, it's volatile energy. It's, um, can be uncomfortable. It can be aggressive. Oh, let me show you why. Hold on. Hold on. I say, uh, the other, the other reason why, and this is why is because there's another T square. So there's two T squares happening at the time of this full moon. Now, let me just rewind for one second. I'm just so excited about this full moon because it's got so many pieces to it. The, the T square between Uranus, the sun and the moon, and actually just Uranus, the sun and the moon is exact, which means all those planets are at 27 degrees. Now, 27 in numerology reduces to nine, which is the final number, final single digit. So number nine is really powerful for endings, okay? Okay, now let's move on. The other piece to this full moon is that we have Mars and Jupiter. Now Mars, and they're in a conjunction, not exact, but close enough. Mars is the initiator. Jupiter wants expansion. So big ideas, initiation, movement forward, yada, 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 right? But here's the, here's the piece that's important. This is the second T-square. So those two planets are making a T-square to Venus, which is the planet of value, of love, of money, of intimacy, right? Beauty and Saturn. Okay. So we have this amazing already pretty, I don't want to use the word volatile, but I can't pretty aggressive full moon, uh, making a T square to Uranus. And now we have this T square of Jupiter, right? So this is another bit of intense energy. It's, 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 um, Mars, when Mars and Jupiter get together, think of Mars as the initiator, the instigator, Jupiter's expansion. So the two of them together are really trying to push energy through. Now, Mars may also uh, be known for anger. Mars is like frustration and emotions out of control. So, and Jupiter can amplify that. So again, if you go back to the beginning of the recording, when I said one of the most powerful pieces to take away from this full moon report is that trust that everything is happening for a reason and take long deep breaths because we have this energy now with mars and jupiter saturn and venus this is energy that's asking you to take responsibility for everything that's showing up in your life it's you know saying like instead of saying like why is this happening to me why is this happening to me why is this why is this happening to me i must be a victim just instead look to the you know hey i if i would have maybe done this this could have happened and i don't even know if that's really a good bit of insight i think maybe instead of playing the victim finding the seed of gratitude in that moment in time right so you know, I went to take my daughter to pick up her car. And as we're driving down the street, I have a random flat tire. Like, what? How? And of course, the first thought is, really? Now? Right now? This week? Now? Right? And then the second thought that comes through is, wow, okay, there must be some reason why I'm not supposed to be on that freeway right now at 3.30 in the afternoon. You know, there's just, there's this whole, I try to remember that there's this whole bigger picture out there that we have zero to do with. Zero, zilch, nada, nothing that we don't know about. And then if we trust in that, 
And then we take responsibility for whatever it is that our thoughts are, right? Well, I was hurrying, maybe I shouldn't have been hurrying, whatever, right? Everything just chills out a little bit. It really does. Okay, let's go back to this little screen. So um, the other thing that would be really helpful during this full moon is if you can just take advantage of some alone time. So when you get time by yourself, don't try to fill it up with scrolling or, um, you know, incessant, like, oh, maybe I should call someone or maybe I should do this or maybe I should do that. Maybe I should clean out the cabinet. Like, that's not this time. Like, sometimes it is. Sometimes the energy is like, let's clear out, right? This energy is really about focusing on your self-awareness, focusing on your inner peace, focusing on, you know, creative matters, your your finances even, right? Like, do I really need to go out and spend that money on the thing that I don't really need? Or can I just like be in the space that is being presented to me now? Like awareness right now is really, really important. The Jupiter and the Mars conjunction, this is like, again, it's really aggressive energy. So just be really mindful. The thing that's interesting to me though, is Mars and Jupiter were in a pretty close, a closer conjunction than they are now right at the Lionsgate portal. So whatever you maybe look back if you are one of those people that uses this energy to set new intentions or let go of things know that this energy is gonna speed up now it's like hit the go button it's time to go now right um and the aquarius let's let's remember for a second that that aquarius in and of itself is higher mind thinking aquarius is about seeing the altruistic, you know, having an altruistic view and seeing the bigger picture. So when we um, are in a space of fight or flight, or we're in a space of struggle, or we're in a space of um, victimization, right? Why is this happening to me? Why does this happen to have to happen right now? This isn't what I planned for. When we're in that, what happens is we miss the subtleties and the magic of the moment, number one. Number two, we also dip our energy. So we're up in these higher realms. And then when we get into that place of victimization, if you were to think of like the emotional um, hierarchy, we spiral down. And then we're in this lower vibe. And then what do you think happens after that? More of this negativity comes, right? So I'm not saying to bypass feelings. I'll never say that. And what I am saying is like, just try to trust that the things that start to fall from your life are actually not meant for you anymore. Or they're meant to take their own path, right? It doesn't mean something needs to be completed. I mean, I just think about that. Like, God, I would love to be just comfy and hanging out with my kid all the time, but that would just not be developmentally appropriate. The girl needs to get out, live her life, figure it out, and come home for Sunday dinner. <laughs> you know, so like just try to notice where you're gripping or where you're, um, you have blinders on about something. Allow yourself some personal peace during the full moon and the days leading up to it, right? Remember two to three days before, two to three days after, it's super intense. So be in a place of like already starting to look at, if you're one of those people where you look at your calendar, like I need to carve out some time for myself. I'm gonna just be on my own for a little while on this day. I'm gonna spend two hours, whatever. But be in a place of just understanding that this full moon is big and it's the last full moon before the eclipse season starts. So we've got we've got some pretty big energy to navigate. Okay. Um, there was a whole bunch of let me see if I can. There's a whole bunch of other things I know that I'm not talking about, but I don't want to talk too much. There's so much. Like Pluto's really activated here too. Pluto is creating a quincunx with the sun and Mercury, which is all about empowerment and power struggles and 
it's right on that zero degrees between Capricorn and Aquarius. It's dipping back into Capricorn and then it'll go back into Aquarius forever. So it's almost like, well, not forever, but in our lifetime, um, Pluto will Pluto will go into Capricorn and then it almost like reintroducing us to any of the karma or any of the lessons around power and power struggles and empowerment and disempowerment that we've been dealing with. Like that's why it's dipping back. Um, it's also trining to Uranus. So those are positive changes. It's sextiling Neptune, which is big dreams, big visions. Like it's beautiful, beautiful energy. And then, you know, I mean, there, it, it's not all bad. And I don't even want to say, you don't even, most of you who know me, you know, I don't like to use the word bad. It's, it's not all tense energy, but it's energy that is, um, challenging you here wait let me stop share it is energy that is challenging you to pull on your spiritual aligned resources and trust that's it and use your tools like yesterday when all this happened in one day i was so frustrated i could feel like this slipping into like a lack of like, oh my God, I didn't plan on spending that money and blah, 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 all the like, shh, right? And I went into the ocean and swam and hung out with friends. And honestly, I felt a thousand times better. I think for me, when I look at the ocean and I realize like how teeny tiny I really am, I'm so teeny tiny that I remember that this too shall pass and that everything's going to be fine. So whatever that is for you, find it during the full moon. Okay. All right. That's all I got. I hope you have a beautiful day. And if you want your chart read, find me at DanaDamara.com. Thanks so much. You guys have a gorgeous day. Namaste.